Well, what's the crack, everybody? How are you getting on? Welcome to another Buckshot for Friday, the 20th of May, 2022. Tonight, if you're listening this morning and you're anywhere near Cork tonight, I'm going to be in Cocklands slash Collins, also known as the Comedy Cavern, on Douglas Street in Cork, which you need Quinlan opening for me. There's a few tickets left as far as I know, so I'm looking forward to this one. So if you're around, come on down. There's a couple of tickets left, I think, on the... Th- I could be wrong, but there may be a couple left on the 3rd of June for uh, the Market Stone in Clohean. The 4th is sold out, so there you are. Patreons would have gotten this last night, along with the video. So, you know, there's that benefit, as well as no ads. So, you know, if ads give you a pain in the bollocks, jump over and become a Patreon. Simple as that. We are having a live show, a live Patreon-only show, over on the channel on Sunday night so if you want to come over and have a bit of crack drink a few beers shoot some shit it's loosey goosey we don't record it so you know as I, I'm doing up the website the website is, is starting to look a bit fresher you know so there'll be merch and everything added to that but if you do want to go through any of the you know the links in any of my profiles you'll find whatever you want in that way merch Patreon page YouTube stuff all the usual crack that you'd expect to find with a comedian you know but more importantly the Patreon page there if you are listening on Spotify would you do us a favour and hit the 5 stars if you haven't already and as well as that smash that bell guys which is really withers me when I hear that but it does mean that it lands in your phone every single Friday and failing all that just give it an old screenshot and tag the podcast on Instagram or Twitter whatever you're listening on just to let people know about the whole crack so housekeeping out of the way moving on to today's guest this one was an absolute belter I had a great time I love the way Peter speaks whereas I go horsing into every conversation just to think my cadence I, I speak like a sledgehammer whereas Peter speaks like a well sharpened knife I just I love love chatting with this man he is tearing it up trees over the UK and chats afterwards it looks like I'm going to be in London hopefully later on this year to join him over there for one of their uh, London Irish soirees anyway we had a powerful time you will too so enjoy, Peter Flanagan, everybody. Good to see you. Long time. Uh, Jack, actually, straight out the gate, yeah. Great to see you. Fucking hell. Yeah, You're always a I person. I, I got. I would get excited when I know I'm on a bill with, but back in the day when we haven't been on a bill together in ages, but I go, oh, you know what? You can have a proper natter with you down the back. Like, do you know That's what? Sad. I've, I've forgotten that, my yeah. stage call, you know, when you're getting called to, oh, and about, yeah, because... You've always got something to say where it isn't the usual how shy talk or it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, sure, that's more of it. So it keeps it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just, and, and not in fairness, comedians tend to have, but it, I used to enjoy our nethers down the back of comedy clubs. But you're uh, yeah, you're you're in London now. I am. Yeah. I think the last time I was chatting to you was outside the inter. And I think you'd just gotten um, you'd just gotten the role. Uh, in the in, in, in the play the yes. touring play yeah uh, oh the, Christ what is yeah. it Befriending the Caveman is that what yeah. it's called Defending the Caveman yeah 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 Defending yeah. the Caveman yeah yeah it was great you were, you were over the moon I remember it was very exciting it was uh, yeah and it was it was jeez it was mental it was mental just to see how more than anything the education of how a professional outfit really runs a setup you know sure. what I mean like sure and the imposter syndrome that I felt Straight out the gate, because they're like, they wouldn't let me pick up any of, because I wanted to help when you're picking up stuff, you know what I mean? And because they have, you know, props and they have, you know, staging and stuff. And they're like, no, 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 that's not we your job. We have people for that. We have people for that. That's not your job. And I was like, yeah. ah, yeah, I'm sure I could. And they're like, no, 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 no. And I, yeah, that took a bit of learning. And then, trust me, three shows into like a few, I'm like, yeah, that's not my job. I think you're fine. <laughs> I was I was a test in no yeah. time at all. Like, like, where is my camembert cheese uh, <laughs> in, my, in my green room? I ins- I'm sure I requested camembert. I tell you that it brings you back down to earth, though, when you go back doing comedy clubs again. It's like, oh, right. Yeah. Landings. Hard landing. La- literally hard landings you're standing on with a bunch of other blokes just looking at each other going, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's the crack. <laughs> but the last time we got to interact... I was trying to think when the last time we met, the last time we got to interact was weirdly on news talk where we didn't actually get to chat at all. But... Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And uh, I think I even was kind of trying to pit us against each other. Yeah. We had pretty much the same viewpoint. So as I recall, 
uh, John Cleese had made a tweet uh, that I think in retrospect was fairly inoffensive. He said something about Ireland, Tom, is that right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he slagged off. He said something about, ah, well, that's, that's just the Irish for you, kind of a thing. It was, it was an old guy tweet, like, but he was just poking the bear, like, just to see what had happened. And Exactly, exactly. And I think you, and I hope I'm not misspeaking here, I think you were kind of being positioned as sort of a free speech advocate yes and, yeah, I yeah, was, yeah. and i was being positioned as a sort of liberal cook uh, <laughs> or uh, i was being positioned as some sort of a fat dandy um, <laughs> you're such a cad oh my yeah. goodness <laughs> and, 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 I, and i think we were uh, ivan was kind of saying and you think this flanagan and I was yeah, like, well, yeah actually I, I don't know if i have said that um I was very being quite funny, and our my 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 I mean you just kind of like I think people are in agreement on this yeah. call, and I've been trying to ramp it up, which is his job, you know. And this this is kind of a lighter part of the show, I guess. But I remember I remember at one point he said, and I hope I'm not misquoting him. He said, "Ah, uh, oh, you know, I mean, I can't I can't believe a comedian, you know, is, is complaining about other comedians." He said that to me, and he said, "You know, you're not even allowed to make fun of disabled people anymore." <laughs> And I, there was this kind of pregnant pulse where either you or I knew what to say. And then I said, Ivan, in fairness, I'm not sure why you would want to make fun. <laughs> yeah, I remember people. that. Yeah, yeah. And then it, the, the call subsequently, the, the interview was subsequently ended. But I, yeah, you're right. I think that was the last time that we chatted, if you like. I often wonder about those things, like, because at least he, and on the hard shoulder, or, you know, at least he would have some, there was some bit of crack out of him. Some, but I got, I was on, they called me about the Dave Chappelle thing the other day. The, uh, right. and they call it comedian. Like, call a, like, if you want to talk horticulture, call, you know, a fucking gardener. Like, but when you call a comedian, don't expect straight out of me. Like, and yeah. it was not, Kieran Goddy is took over from Ivan and he's, right. he's normally gets the crack, but it was Anton Sta- Savage sitting in. <laughs> and while Anton is a very capable driver, a very capable journalist, Crack would not be at the front of his, and he was trying to sensationalize this thing. And he was like, well, What do you make of it, Tom Mahoney? I went, To be honest with you, it was number one, a really weak tackle. He led with the outside shoulder. <laughs> I mean, he nearly knocked himself out. Number two, Chappelle should have seen that coming from a mile away, should at least fend it or sidestepped it. It was a disgrace. Silly, 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 right? It was like, What? So you're telling me now it's and I, oh, uh, uh, oh here we go. I wish I had Peter Flanagan on the other fucking side so we could actually yeah. have a bit of crack here. Like. Yeah, Anton didn't quite understand that he's speaking to a comedian and there might be some tomfoolery. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, the scandal, the notion of that, like Jesus Christ. Yeah, right, I'm surprised at that, but I'm also not that surprised. No, ah, he was, he was, in, to be honest with you, he sounded like a guy who'd one eye on the clock, one eye on the, like he read the word comedian. He didn't. He read it aloud, but he did, it didn't register in the head at all. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to know what they want sometimes when you're asked to do these things. And uh, sometimes you're. I remember the, the interview uh, with Ivan that time. The producer beforehand kind of uh, kind of gearing me up for a different a different type of conversation. And then we're kind of thrown out there, and you're on national radio you know <laughs> your alpha is listening in the next room just to see how much of a prick you make yourself <laughs> and uh you know the, the the stakes are a little bit higher than uh, than you anticipated you know so tell me how you because i remember chatting with you when you were the london thing was about happening i think we were in downstairs in the crunch and you were over yeah. and back and work i don't know had they given you a trade a, a trade like it's the American football or something. Jesus Christ. It was transferred. I was a trans- the hot, hottest yeah, I, free agents. I, had, I, I was one of the hottest free agents in Bank of Ireland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was uh, I had a day job for most, most of my time in Dublin. And uh, I blagged. I really want, I knew they had a London office. They had a kind of uh, outpost in London. And I knew I wanted to get there, but they didn't have any, like I've no real, I have no real love, no real growl for banking and like qualification. I just, I blagged a job in there in the first place. And now I was trying to blag a job over in London and they needed somebody to work in uh, transformation, change and transformation, a kind of IT transformation. Okay. Right? And I remember meeting a guy 
English guy in the Marker Hotel in Dublin. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he had this vacancy and uh, he bought me uh, tiger prawns in a kind of a garlic uh, in, in a kind of garlic so, so specific I love this yeah I remember it so vivid <laughs> and it's it's really hard to, and I'm like in my mid-20s at the point I'm, trying, I'm already ridiculous I mean I'm in an ill-fitting suit trying to sound professional yeah and I'm eating are you I'm crossing your garlic. legs the wrong way as well like your <laughs> legs are crossed the wrong way uh, you're trying desperately like how do you eat a garlic prawn I know uh, I with know a, with a banking executive and you're trying to sound uh, intelligent uh, and I said, yeah, I can do that. So I got a transfer uh, over to London. And uh, yeah, but my, 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 what I really wanted to do was, was perform comedy. And yeah, that's, of course. That's, I think, I mean, that's the problem when you've got a day job. You're kind of like a closeted comedian. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, you bring it, the trainers in the bag, like just, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's kind of I'm, eating you up inside this double yeah. life, you know. Um, <laughs> I love yeah. that. I've never actually put it. That's <laughs> that's perfect. I knew you being good, a good writer would actually. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. Yeah, where you just <laughs> what are you doing, Stephen? Oh, nothing. Uh, yeah, you know. how was your weekend? Oh, I just had a quiet one. Yeah, I had a quiet. Because <laughs> you know, in so many instances, even if you did, like, there's you can come out with it any because we're you know we're accepted nowadays peter it's, it's you know it's in most circles we're accepted anyway you know what i mean 2022 <laughs> but you know when you say it anyway you may as well have said beekeeper you know what i mean because it's so far from anybody's realm they're like oh is it nice you're like yeah 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 it was yeah 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 because there's yeah. absolutely Unless somebody has an absolute growth for stand up, there's no way they're going to number one overly give a shit, but number two even try and process it, like because it's, I, I'm not going to say it's akin to, you know, being an astronaut, but it's that far removed from a lot of people's. They're like, oh, do you not just grow in a field and somebody, do you not just turn up on telly? No, oh, oh, that's a thing. Is you know that's what I've gotten an awful lot of lately, yeah. especially doing a lot of these rural places. That's what I've gotten. It's like this is great, but I had never considered you could not be off telly you know yeah yeah well i think that's the big difference between the uk and ireland is that uh over here every small town has like the local monthly comedy club and in ireland it just isn't really there isn't that tradition like you, 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 i mean we're both from small towns right yeah there isn't just that tradition of the theater in no. like newbridge you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I like there, to, the entire county of Tipperary doesn't have a fucking theatre <laughs> fucking vibe. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, and the, the you know the, there was no working men's clubs because in a lot of in a lot of times there were no working men. Yeah, they so were all they, in England working. Yeah, they, yeah. They, in the work well, gone, they would go to the working men's club. So there was no tradition of like going down to see a comedian on a Friday night. Yeah, yeah, after yeah, yeah. work. You know where? So the, the, one of the challenges I think. And you'll you'll probably know this better than me at this stage. When you go out to an Irish audience, first of all, everyone thinks they're hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, so they're quite they're quite self assured in their own uh, gasness, um, <laughs> and they don't know you. Yeah, you're not you're you haven't been on television that they're aware of. Yeah, uh, so they don't totally take you seriously. You know, of course. And they, 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 they'll give you a chance, but they would, they would prefer to be part of the show. They love crowd work. They love, they, they, oh. they and it, you'll get good natured heckles usually from Irish people. They want to be part of the show. Whereas in England, you go out to, I did a gig in like a borough hall. Uh, I, I, like you'll, you'll go out to these bum fuck English towns uh, and you'll be performing in like a, a church hall or like an old Quakers building that I, they would have handed out soup to Irish people in the yeah. in, in in the nineteenth century, you know. <laughs> and there's like all these kind of stony faced, you know, retired accountants who are sitting there, oh. and they you're the comedian. They they you're you're they, they had a different comedian last month. You're this month's comedian, and they expect you to be able to do the job, um, you know. And and, and it's a it, it's a totally different uh, perspective, I think, on live entertainment theory. Isn't that like I've, I've often said it like there's just you get some of the garrison towns. All right. Would have a decent theater. Go, but you get then 
like I did it, that that one of those rural places I did it was in a place called Ar, uh, Clohean, small town. They call themselves a, a town, but it's a village and it's going nowhere. It's a beautiful picturesque town on a, on a nice drive, but it's got it's not on the way to anything. But incredible people to go out to something, to go out mm-hmm. to a show. Yeah. Even though they, they have a village hall and stuff, but incredible. Like I put on I, I, I've asked, you know, I was asked to put on one show and within two hours she rang and said, you better be getting ready to do a second show. I was like, what? She goes, that one just sold out. Wow. And three hours later, the other one had more or less sold out. It's like, what? The? But That's I don't amazing. I don't know what what it is. Now, you could go to a large town here and you're not going to get that at all. You're not because it's sports over everything. Sports over everything. But you, whatever it is, I, I, I need to find the ingredient. I need to tap into this and start actually going around asking people, why do you, yeah. why, why are you going there's to a, this thing? There's a special sauce there somewhere. Yeah, they're, there they're has to be. Fundamentally, they're not fundamentally different from English people. And if you live in one of these small Irish towns, like you still need a, a good date night. People still use Tinder, you know. Yeah. People still want something different to do that isn't the pub. And you've probably tapped into what it sounds like you've tapped into some community like the the, the, people, the word of mouth sold the first show and now there's demand for a second yeah. show i think of like jer staunton's gig down in castle bar you know there are these if, if you can tap into the community aspect of these small towns people will people will go and trust you, you know? i think what i've i was i was literally making notes on it going this is going to be a study as to see how it happens because if we can find it in another way and like much like castle bar it's a self-contained town and that there's good employment there. Mm-hmm. And what I've noticed by a lot of these people that were, I did a gig there a couple of, a couple of months ago with uh, Bernard Casey. And oh, that's cool. where it twi- twigged in my head. And what I noticed was a lot of people were from nearby, but they all seemed to be working in small, small businesses around. And the entire work staff came out to it. Do you know what that's I mean? Right. So there'd be a wood mill up the road. They might have 15 people working, including, you know, the, the sec, you know, the, the office staff as well. They all came to it because it was like, well, what else are we going to do? Which is a great attitude to have. Like, but yeah. again, you go to like, you go to a town, one of the biggest inland towns in the country in Clonmel, couldn't pull people out by the teeth because while there's a lot of employment there, everybody travels home. You know, it's like a mini city vibe. They all travel right. out to their villages, back away, back to, you know. So they're not they're not there on the Friday Saturday night. No, they are not. It's it's there's no community in it in that kind of sense. Mm. So I mm. tapping into that. That's it's interesting. I might see. Can I? I might uh, might see. Can I somehow create the English? This is a thing that's going to happen. You'll enjoy yeah. it. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that is that's exactly you put the nail on the head. Trust me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's because I, I remember we did a gig myself and Delamere did a gig for the local GA here. Three hundred and fifty people packed it out, and wow. I would, but I would say fifteen to twenty percent were actually from my local village. They were all down the pub going fuck that, you know. Now I know <laughs> they say don't you know never be a prophet in your own parish or whatever they say like, but right, you know what I mean. It was just a strange attitude to it. Yeah. So did, yeah. did, have you jacked all banking then? Have you walked away from all banking? Yeah, I, I, I made a really smart decision. I left Bank of Ireland in 2019. Um, I was like, right, 2020 Good. is going to be the best year of my oh, life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Diaries full. This is my moment, you know? <laughs> uh, so by, <laughs> the end of March, by the end of March 2020, not only was I not a full-time comic living my dream in East London, I had just moved back in with my parents. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was wow. oh shit. Shit. It was, it was like, I, it was kind of like just shock more than anything. How, how, fa- really how fast was the turnaround? Like would say Leo made the, made the announcement. Boris was making announcements. Yeah. So I, I forget the exact actual timeline. I think England and Ireland were like a week out. They're like a week yeah. apart. So my last gig was a downstairs at the King's Head. I don't think I've ever done it. a crowd chance. Um, it's like one of these really old comedy clubs. It's been around since. I the think I have done it. Yeah, yeah, I think you I probably have, done. have. You've probably done it at some stage. And I remember doing it on the Saturday, and it was St. Patrick's Day and the Tuesday, and we were running Irish gigs on the Tuesday. And it was like, will they go ahead? Won't, will they, won't they go ahead? And I remember on the Tuesday, like we were still accepting ticket sales, 
And then I rang my business partner for that particular show. And I said, look, we, we just got one of the acts who just texted us and say, look, my, my housemate is ill. I don't think I can come in. This, this is before antigen tests. This is before anyone knew. Like, we just panicked. You know? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do the show. Uh, and I said, look, let's, let's not do this. So we, we pulled it before the venue and then the venue pulled up. It was top secret comedy club and they pulled up all their shows. And then it was it. It was kind of like it happened. It happened really quickly. It was denial for a while. and Then it was all gone. But I remember on the Saturday night, kind of my opening sentence was like, Jesus, like, is that, you remember Brexit? How great was Brexit? Because yeah. that, that, it's easy to forget when that's all anyone talked about. Yeah. And then suddenly with, within the course of a week, it was like this, uh, you know, exotic uh, disease from yeah. Asia, you know, and that got a big laugh. And I was like, geez, why are we out? We're all mad. So I remember walking to the gig and Ireland was locked down. Everyone's yeah. freaking out Ireland. But walking to the gig, you're passing packed restaurants, packed bars on my way to crowd chain. I'm saying, to you, are we mad for coming out? And then this girl in the front row had just this really clear, consistent cough. Oh, and the first time she did it, I was like, ah, ah, ah. But then the second cough and the third cough during my set, I was like, you've seen, you've seen way too many zombie movies for that. This isn't funny. You out. This isn't funny. And it wasn't, you know, and I was, oh, man. Um, yeah, by the, by the Tuesday, it was, all, it was all over. Jesus. Yeah, I remember, yeah. yeah. The, the, the my one yeah it was just that morning it was the morning that Leo announced it from whatever and that was the year we'd done Caveman 2019 and they were so happy with the the turnout you know they went all right now now that's the way they do it worldwide they'll give it a run with a few grand put behind it advertising wise it suck and see kind of a thing and if it's it's a bit gore they'll get they'll put big money behind it oh 2020 feeder <laughs> we booked out the Liberty Hall for the entirety of September. Oh man. Yeah. We were taking it by storm. They were putting mega bucks behind it. And it was like that morning, like just a phone call came in going, Yeah, I'd say Tom uh I'd, I'd take say it out of the diary. Take it well, at least write it in in pencil at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. I'm gonna fuck the diary in the <laughs> into the fire. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those things where you think, I really thought I'd be back in London by June. Yeah, of course. Um, and just kept going and going, you know. Well, we moved down the country. We were, well, we were in Enniscary, so we weren't exactly in Dublin anyway, but we, it was literally one Tuesday of cooking stuff outside on the barbecue or whatever. And it was like, we just fuck off. And ourselves was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Do you know, yeah. and literally everything half the price immediately. Like, you're like, oh, well, this makes a bit, a bit more sense anyway. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. But, uh, but you're you you're back. You're back. When did you go uh, back then? So I moved back. I, I I I was kind of back and forth last year. Right. So I kind of started. I did my first gig back June 2021 in England. I got like an Airbnb for the month of June, and then I got another Airbnb kind of month of September. And then was back and forth October, November, December, just weekends here and there. Yeah. Um, and then did you did you did you tell people that you were over and back or did you make up? Yeah, yeah, you know, did you kind of do you, I was you want? Vague. Yeah, I was you so want them vague. to think that you're always available, don't you? Yeah, you know what I mean? You want you, people, you don't want people to think, oh, he's done. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you you I was like, I'm around, you know. Don't 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 forget about me. I'm around. Uh so I signed a lease on a place in January. Um, right good man so i've been back I've been back what is that four months now something like that like yeah. living here i so, was yeah. what like what was it to establish that this is definitely back 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 you know what i mean or did had you aim for january or was it gonna go oh fuck it you know what let's just I'd, do it. I'd started looking for an apartment like november time okay right um and uh, i'd been doing bits and pieces of work uh, I've been doing contract work. I, I managed to keep myself afloat with content writing for uh, American finance companies, basically. So, Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So I was like, okay, I, I don't want to go back into banking. I don't think I can go back into banking because, you know, I, I, I left. Um, but, and I want, so I, obviously, you know, I, I'm a journalist as well as yeah, a comic. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, well, what's the, 
what's the, uh, how do I monetize this? I do have experience in financial services. I can write, how do I, how do I marry it? So I ended up finding this really kind of easy, uh, this really easy workaround for me. So that's kind of, uh, that certainly kept, kept the wolf from the door uh, the last couple of years. I, I, so what were you writing on behalf of financial companies? So you would be doing everything from like blogs or, uh, you know, you might open up, you know, their app and all the, all the, uh, all the words on the page, you know, I'm responsible for this. Right. And which, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there, so these companies will have a book, right? Like we can all write, read, write, right. But yeah. Most of us can't yeah. if we're looking enough, right. Um, but, uh, they will have a marketing budget for somebody to come in and be their writer and just make sure everything like reads well. So that's, that's brilliant. Brilliant. I, I love hearing that, especially that you took it from a banking institution. I love that, that you took <laughs> money from them. It just seems, feels like you reached over their shoulder and into their pocket, even though you did it yeah. using your skills, you know what I mean? But at the yeah, same time you went, this took no skin off your back whatsoever. Like, <laughs> I just have some of that cashola. Thank you uh, very much. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I love so hearing I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with it. So I got some money together. Uh, you know, London's expensive. Oh, so, Jesus, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I don't know if it's even much more expensive than Dublin these days, to be honest with you. It's probably not. Listening to some, what some, Jesus Christ, some of the, because I, now I'm not claiming it, but it definitely is a coincidence that like two or three mates, probably f- actually four in total, but within like a month to six weeks, all scattered from Dublin, and yeah. and it was it. The phone calls came in, going, "You're moving, yeah, but how? Like, I'm but sure this place is is dead in the water. Like, it's there's nothing we can do here. And truth be told, if I break it down, I spend about fifteen percent of my working life in Dublin. Mm-hmm. I think I can do that two hours away. I yeah. think I, in fact, I'll be close to Galway, closer to Limerick, Cork, Waterford. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll be for I'll you. Be, it probably makes more sense. Not far more Dublin. sense. Well, yeah. I mean, given that herself really always wanted to move to the countryside, my parents yeah. are down. And you ju- you notice it straight away. Like, I mean, like something that I haven't had in a long time is the inside track on things, you know, that kind of way. Because like we want to build and stuff like that. So I was like, I put putting the word out there and it was like people were actually, I know a couple of people from blow-ins or whatever were looking for the same thing I was looking for. They were getting yeah. no traction. And out of nowhere, all right. of a sudden people were calling to my parents' house going, hey, does Tom know about... Uh, you know, before it ever goes, <laughs> you know, these things I'm like, the ins- yeah. oh yeah, the inside track, even small things down to like the primary school I went to was, is really difficult to get into now because really, yeah, it's a very forward thinking principle there. She's really, really, she's streets ahead of, of where, you know, really forward thinking. Like she brings in sculptors and has this kid sit outside with gol- like a chainsaw sculptor one day. And I, I remember driving past and all these little kids sitting outside with goggles on watching this guy with a chainsaw. I was like, what the fuck? that's way better than playing with shit inside. Like, were, they, you know were they just watching the man with a chainsaw? I they hope they got to go. go. I hope they got to go. I know yeah. my young fella anyway would want to go. Like, but he's, <laughs> but to me, again, it was like, you know, seri- talk about waiting lists and everything. But again, oh. because my mother is on the board of council, you know, I went to school with one of the teachers. Turns out the priest that married us is also on the board. So it's like, oh no, that's, <laughs> That's not a problem. We in Got fact a few connections, but it's little touches like that. Whereas for years I kind of yeah. would have poo. No, I'm using such a British thing to say here, but poo pooed that kind of thing. You know, yeah. you know, it's all it's all about you know fucking nepotism and whatnot. Fuck yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. but it's suddenly it's okay. It's not too bad when it comes your way. Like, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And I love I love the disparity between nepotism and different. Like in London, it'd be like uh, my uncle. Uh, just got the inside track on this uh, in this airline leasing business in Zimbabwe. We just we've just bought some airspace in Zimbabwe. We're going to be millionaires uh, <laughs> in in Tipperary. It's like I know a priest. Yeah. He's on the board of governors of the local primary school. Yeah, my yeah, child yeah. is going to get a primary education. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, after all, I mean, which one is better? I mean, one you're English, the other you're not. So yeah, that's, well, exactly, you know. Exactly, exactly. But I do, I love, because I mean, you and and some, like some of the lads properly, and I watch your, you know, see your clips and stuff, and you probably poke fun at the at the English, like, and you don't give a fuck. Like if it was done the other way around, they'd be burnt at the stake in the local town. Yeah, like. yeah. Well, do you know what? It's 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 a balancing act, Tom. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. It's one yeah. I've learned hard way. 
Right. Oh, say. oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Have you yeah. gone over I the was... line a small bit? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. And, uh, you know, I think, yeah, you uh, what I, I will. I will definitely temper it slightly now, especially if like, if you're performing in East London, you might as well be performing in, I don't know, Dublin or. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so York diverse or whatever. It's so it's so cosmopolitan. People people aren't sensitive, generally speaking. And you can just tear into it unvarnished and people people get it yeah but if you are performing in one of these kind of village halls <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and yeah, you yeah, open yeah. with you know fucking let's let's get the brits out of our own <laughs> <laughs> you know? they don't let, are you asking, your are you asking? <laughs> yeah who's with me um, so uh, uh so i what i will do now is i will terry wogan I will go full time. Yes. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, be the acceptable face of Ireland. And you can do the exact same jokes you were going to do, but you have to be coming at it through the prism of woganness. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, okay, he's, he's joking. You know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you've 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 enough stage maturity and time to to understand that. It's like it's like the Irish rural crowd. You can't come at them with that soft touch stuff because they'll just go, "Well, fuck this." Do you know yeah. they they yeah. won't buy it? There has to be yeah. a, 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 almost like uh, you know Iron Fist and a Velvet Glove. Like you will have to beat them up a little bit at the beginning mm-hmm. before they'll have any respect for you. So in yeah, the same sure. sense, you know, it's not like you know a comedy club in Dublin where they go, "Oh, great. well, we know what's happening here. We know yeah. what's ha- you know." Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been I've been booed on stage, booed on stage. Brilliant. Your next act is from Ireland. Boo! Like this would have been at the height of. The kind of Brexit negotiation tension for like late yeah. 2019. I've I've had the full spectrum of that. What, um, what now? So your thought process, you're going, all right, tie up the boots here, Peter. I'm gonna yeah. fucking I'm gonna verbally kick the bollocks out of this. Or are you gonna go, I'm gonna come around the side of that fucker's head real <laughs> subtle? I'm gonna spend the first minute or two just real subtle and then I'm gonna make him piss his pants. Like, what's your thought yeah. process there? My, my my thought process is okay, this is gonna be a bear pit. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Like I'm thinking of one gig in particular was in uh, East London, and I'm thinking, okay, there's actually divided because the country's so divided. Yeah. So there's 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 a group of people here who've probably had a bit much to drink. They've probably read half a newspaper, um, and are associating me with some sort of plot to ruin Brexit. <laughs> uh, and you know they're they're have they're they're, they're booing. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. But then there's another group of people who are like embarrassed. Yeah. And now a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, at this at, at what's happened you know so i'm playing to once i'm going to do my act exactly as i plan to do it and i'm gonna but i'm playing it to one side of the room and Perfect. if you can pit one side of the room against the other that's really fun that's a, that's a really fun atmosphere. yeah 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 and i'm lucky i can kind of i can get away with a lot by just grinning at them you know um i can get away with a lot and my 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 style is so punchy yes yeah 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 i can kind of, I can kind of just tear into them and if i need if I need to deal with a heckle, I, I, I'll do that. Um, but you're, you, I don't, I don't think you want to welcome it either. I've seen people who get up and they, they kind of try and take on the yeah. crowd, and you can't win. You can't win that. Yeah, you, you, you're the comic. You're the one telling the jokes. You're the one steering the ship always. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It is it, to be booed onto stage. I don't think I've ever had that, but I did find myself in London a few times, kind of gone, oh here we go, and I've gone, all right, here we fucking go. But you can. Without actually being too, like people are probably wondering, well, how the fuck did Peter tell who who's with him and who's not? You can actually tell by their faces. The glow off their face will tell you everything you need to know, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like you're physically, yeah. they do not have to have you know jack boots on and fucking you know a union union jack fucking wife beater on. You can yeah. tell who's with you and who's not. Like so, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And look, I mean, I give out about English audience sometimes, but that's because I perform ninety five percent of my gigs are in England. But yeah. like, like I did a gig and there's drunks in every audience, right? I did a gig uh, before the pandemic. And it, was a, it was a big, it was an important gig to me. It was a trial spot at a big club over here. And I walk out, I'm really nervous. You're getting the dry map, whatever. And I walk out and there's these city boys in the front row. Oh, They're lovely. suited and booted. A lot, uh, of, Essex, a lot of cocaine. Essex types. Yeah, almost certainly. Yeah. And I start, I start making fun of the UK. Like, you're, you're getting the shoulders crossed. They're looking up at you. They're not happy. They're, they're giving a bit of this, right? Mm. 
Uh, then I then I start making fun of Ireland. I also have jokes about Ireland, believe it or not. Uh, and at this point, there's a woman sitting over to my right hand side who's shit faced uh, from bumfuck Midlands, wherever she's from. Lovely. And she's just asking, "Stop telling lies about Ireland. Stop <laughs> telling lies about." And you're, so I'm getting that. I'm getting from one side. I'm getting from this side. I was, oh my god! Like. I've I'm I'm so dislikable. I've managed to unite <laughs> the English nationalists and the Irish nationalists together. And I think if I've given anything to the world, uh, it's it's that. <laughs> you know? How did the trial go anyway? It was great. They 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 uh, they brought me backstage and told me uh, welcome to the family. It was a lovely moment. Um, and I think I think I think in an environment like that, you know, as a comic, I hope this isn't too inside baseball, but I think when you're when you're playing a room like that, and it's a big room. Mm. I think your instinct is you asked me earlier, what do you do when somebody's boom? You know, it really depends because yeah, in that environment, yeah, yeah. most of that crowd couldn't hear the heck. That's I'm the talking, thing. I'm yeah, with somebody in the front row and somebody to my to my right. It's a big room. It's noisy. Most people can't hear them. Yeah. So if I, I've got two options. I can like deal with the heckle. And then as you know, as a comic, you're kind of leaving a lot up to chance. Yeah. Um, with a drunk maybe, person. Yeah. yeah. Especially with a drunk person. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll think, maybe they'll, that they'll say something and you'll have a comeback that is going to be brilliant. It could, but it, it could be, it could be an absolute cul-de-sac. And now you're five minutes into your trial spot and you're, you're floundering. You yeah. Know? Or do you just crack on? Yeah. Do you just do your act? The rest of the audience can't hear them. Only you can hear them. And you're a professional. So what are you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to break? Yeah. Are you going to do your act? You know? So. I, I, um, I, in a very weird, I did a very weird gig the weekend before last. I played the three arena. Um, 10,000, wow. 10,000 fucking wow. people. Insane. Insane. But it was God, God, thank God for acting skills. Because you're inside your own fish tank because you're 10 yes. foot back from the edge of the stage because they've set it up with pyros and everything for the boys that are, I'm play, you know, I'm opening for. And then there's another 15 feet to the, f- to the front row. And for the first three minutes, I'm rocking it like, I, but the problem is they've got it set up in such a way that I can't, I can't hear myself outside. I can okay. barely hear them, even though I can see their faces laughing. Yeah. So I'm powering through for all I'm fucking worth. And this guy in like, there's a guy in a, in like, well, I, the article, like a fisherman's hat, you know, from like Neil Gallagher, from, Noel Gallagher from fucking wow. 1999, you know, and you're like, and does, he, does he have the quirks hanging from the brim? Just That's shy of that. Talking. Like, and he's just, yeah, fucking, okay. he's just giving lip. Big, and it was strange because it was the two Johnnies and it, you would hear a Dublin accent. He's just fucking giving lip. And, I, and I'm going yeah. there. If ever there's a point, Tom, to, Absolutely not pay attention to that moment. Yeah. Because there's 9,999 other people. Yeah. At least we'll say 990 that have, you know, no idea that this guy's saying anything like. Yeah. So but, this guy's in like row 17, section F. Yeah. Uh, no, he's, 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 he's bang on. He's, ba- he's oh, pretty really? close. You can see him. You can see oh, him. I can see him. And the okay. thing is, everybody is, uh, and, for a brief moment, I looked over and the, the guy, like, this is when you have amazing people on tech. And the guy on tech, this guy was just fucking lip giving it loads. And it, I don't know if he picked up my eye because I just got for a split second, I kind of thought he must have picked up what I didn't realize anybody else was picking up. And between them laughing, I, I caught, do I? Nah, drive on. And then I noticed he was able to pick out a fucking light on the roof to light this guy. From like a hundred foot high roof down, lit him in the middle of darkness. And I went, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> this is God telling me to do this. Like, uh, gave him a bit of a roast. And, and the guy sorry. on the, ca- um, then you see what made it perfect it, in exactly the total opposite to what you said about nobody would know. Of course, they had three cameras set up right there, uh, right on the guy. Looked like a complete uh, douchebag. I went, that's great. Now, seriously, does anybody think this motherfucker belongs? Get like ten thousand people down on That's this bastard. Great. I went okay. So he's up on the on the Titan Tron. He's up on yeah, the screen. Two forty oh, foot amazing. by forty foot screens oh, for a split second. Everybody saw him. Yeah. Went, Looks like a gun, which he did. And you've you've got the mic, but not only give you the mic, you've the mic three arena. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now now he's isolated in a sea of people who have not paid to hear him. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And like they may not have even picked up on it, but what what, what was so great about him was he looked like such a douchebag. <laughs> so visual, visually, that's all people needed to see for a split second. Like right, right, and right. 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 So that's it, great. In a but in a very in but to, to to back up what you were saying in the laughter lounge a couple of weeks ago had the exact same thing. Guys just drunk this Welsh guy just blah, blah, fucking and I knew there was no point because everybody else was looking forward so attentively laughing away. So literally, I just reached off the stage and shook his hand. And the guy was so bamboozled. He was looking at his hand for like 30 seconds, like gone. And that was him done. He didn't know what wow. had happened. He was like, yeah. Okay. okay. You gave him the hand of friendship. But he, does, he doesn't. He acknowledged me. Oh, fine. I'm fine now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just like, yeah. you just, look, I get it. You weren't held as a child. I get it. <laughs> None of us were. But at least we made a profession out of it. <laughs> you just hate your fucking life. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like sometimes it's like you really want to smash the heck or, or whatever. But oh, sometimes yeah. just, that's just your ego talking as well. So, yeah. Like I did a gig oh, a couple of months ago now. It was down in Bournemouth, which Lovely. is like uh, Tremor uh, on steroids, right? So imagine doing a comedy film Tremor, right? Yeah, uh, I have done. Uh, and have not, I had more teeth than the combined audience. <laughs> it was unbelievable the hack of the humans that walked into that fucking room oh my lord in that environment you're almost hoping they don't laugh so you don't have to see the insides of their mouths right they, i could see their souls there's so much blackness inside <laughs> their mouth i could see their souls it was just brutal oh my god um i so it's 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 in a nightclub is the venue and every ticket sold every ticket sold is a hen party or a stag. Lovely. Mirrors every, all over every, the walls. Lovely. Every ticket sold. Like it's targeted at these groups. Um, so you've got maybe 200 people, 250 people in this nightclub environment. Uh, and I'm on last. I've got to do 20 minutes at the end. And they'd already, like they kind of stopped listening around halfway through the middle act. Great. So the person doing 20 minutes in the middle, they just kind of stopped listening to him. The MC's back on. He was doing like, he was kind of, he, had, he brought a prop on. Oh, uh, he, oh, he, oh. He, <laughs> he brought, like, you know those Uber <laughs> Uber uh, backpacks? So he, he, he got an Uber jacket and an Uber um, uh, backpack. Um, and he he's on stage kind of mincing around. Uh, doing too long like if you're if, if it's at oh. the end of the show just bring on bring on the closer bring nobody's going to give out him for that no yeah just, just bring me on I, i'm glancing my watch i'm like I'm, i want to leave i want to go i want to go back i want to leave this place like, but he's he's mincing about dressing the uber driver and they're like <laughs> either talking amongst themselves or just openly abusing him right i get introduced and it's like you know when you're like you want to do you're booked for 20 you want to do 19 minutes no more yeah, because you can I, taste you can taste your a glass of whiskey on your sofa at home. Absolutely, right, right and it's, it's, at this point they're just not going to listen. You yeah. Know? So I'm just hammering, 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 hammering with, with jokes, just doing the act, doing the act, doing the act. And to your point about uh, seeing this guy in the in the fisherman's hat, there's this old lady. So I'm trying to keep their attention, and there's this old lady in like the far side of the room, on the right hand side, and she's looking at. And she's doing a little jig. Oh, as in okay. Like, as kind right. of like an, a, a kind of a, a, an Irishman's jig, right. right? Okay. Kind of, and she's jigging, and I'm like, just don't look at her. And that's because I'm playing to the whole room. I have to be really physical. I have to make a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm playing to the room. I'm scanning the room. And every time my line of vision comes <laughs> towards her booth, she breaks into the jig. You know, she's really trying to break me oh, off my, my, my attention. Ah, ignore her, ignore her, ignore her. And then, there's one bloke uh, in like uh, English people have an amazing uh, some English people I should say have an amazing uh, capability to simultaneously look really hard and an utter pots. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know one of these like skinheads and floral shirts Car you know? covered in tats would be like a pig fucking Henry Lloyd. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You, you nailed it. Right. This guy's covered in tattoos. A kind of shaved head was in this kind of really gauche kind of a uh, gold and black floral, you know, short oh, sleeve shirt. Kind lovely. Of, you know, got the got the gold uh, 
got the gold necklace on and nice. he's kicking off now. His mates are kicking, they're in some little stag. So I have no choice now but to talk. I can yeah. ignore I can ignore the jigging woman, uh, <laughs> but I actually can't ignore this guy. Um, and you'll know from experience, like if you if you get taken on by a stag, you have to destroy. Oh yeah, yeah. There's you no reasoning. To, yeah. Yeah. Like it's different if it's like a hen party because women will band together and come at you. If yeah. you make fun of one of the girls, you're done. Literally, they're called hens for a reason. Hens do the yeah. exact same thing. Right, right, exactly. But for stag, your only option is to go super hard at the heckler. And if you go hard enough, if, if you get it just right, the rest of the stag will take your side. Yeah. Because you're taking you're taking the piss out of their bait. Yeah. Out, right. So now this guy's gone. He's he's made his decision. He's 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 run out of cocaine. Uh, you know, he he's glancing at his watch and saying, right, I've only I've only five minutes left to go for this fucking Irishman. Uh, I'm gonna go for it. So I can't even remember what he says to me, honestly. Um, but I'm like, okay, I have to fucking go for it. I'm going for it. And there was he been flirting with a girl in the front row. And I was like, Well, you're not interested in her, are you? And she's like, No. I see, she doesn't like you. And I'm like, I'm really being quite mean, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, um, I'm like, you know, what do you what what do you do for a living? And he's like, gives a kind of a joke answer. I'm like, you're unemployed. And he's like, Yeah, I am. And I was like, um, so I was like, who, you know, are you, and I'm trying to get, the, it turns out he's the only single guy in the stack. Right. So he's unemployed. He's sing, and I'm really, I'm really going for it. Um, and then he's like, oh, but then he starts giving it back to me. Like, oh, you're a fucking comedian, whatever. And I say, you're right. I, I am. A, and I have been unemployed. Like, I know what it's like. It's not easy. But like, I'm a, yeah, and I'm a comedian. But you know what? If comedy doesn't work out for me, something else will <laughs> you've got a neck tattoo and a floral shirt you're fucked and his mates are falling around the place laughing uh the rest of the room are enjoying it uh and i'm like all right ladies and gentlemen you know get, get, so in that in that situation you've got you got to go for the headshot oh you have to uh, Oh. But the jig, you know, but if it's a jigging woman or you know a stray heckle in a big room, I think you kind of yeah you do the action move on. Yeah, there was a guy. Yeah, again, it was it was in a it was in a comedy club in what was it? It was actually it was it was for a corporate, but weirdly they it was a like a well to do corporate, but did a lot of fucking headbangers working for him, like, and this woman had brought her partner i don't know what he was to her did i care but he was that guy he was literally the clone of the guy that guy you just and he's fucking giving it all that and the teeth are ridiculously white and it wasn't a stag party but you could tell everybody was kind of going okay he's 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 too fucking much yeah and i could sense everybody was on my side i went oh oh <laughs> oh no <laughs> And there was no getting around it. I said, dude, you look like if I ordered Conor McGregor on Wish. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? I need that. I said, you got a hat, you got a fucking watch tattoo, a clock tattooed on the back of your hand. Like you could fucking read the time. You, you know, I just went to all that. Where'd you what color white did you go for? Nuclear. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, and the guy for a finish just uh, fucked and he was gone. And it was this beautiful moment. It's like, but also in this in a, a mature way, I felt bad for that that had to be done. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It was almost like having to put down the, the family pet. It was like, look, yeah. you know, it was like five years ago, I would have loved that. I would have fucking yeah. loved that. But now it's yeah. like, I'm trust me, lads, I'm better than that. Like, that's not just yeah. ripping into people. Is oh, I write shit. This is, you know, so it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't, you don't want to resort to stylized abuse. Of a yeah, stranger, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, there are certain environments where it's like, okay, I, I have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> You know? I'm so sorry, but this is going yeah, to I'm be. So, but I, you know, you, and he, he's probably not a bad guy, but he, you know, he probably thinks heckling was part of it. Probably yeah. Thought, you know, but you know, I, in that situation, he wasn't going to shut up. He was being disrupted. I'm already in a bad mood because I'm, I'm. The gig is already so hard <laughs> that if I don't just go, cut his throat, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I probably won't get rebooked even. I mean, you know, you've got to. You've not that I want it to be rebooked. But I gotta get. I want to be paid and, and get back to London safely, right? So you gotta do what you gotta do. The, the jig is an interesting one because you're there long enough now, and at least you can voice your opinion because you write for the Irish Times, 
uh, and journal.ie, which is class. Like, oh, thanks, man. It's fucking class. You know what I mean? You'd, you'd hear every so often lads will write a blog or something for a certain crowd, but then you see Peter's like, I'm just writing for the Irish Times. It's like, deadly. This will be a good because <laughs> you want to read something. The Irish Times is a, is a great read anyway, but you want to read something that at least you can relate to because so often, again, like the divide between myself and Anton Savage the other day, the only, genuinely, if we had a proper conversation, we'd say, well, we both like driving fast cars. That's about it. Because okay. let's be honest, but when you read your article, you're like, oh, I, and it's just like, you know, when you see your mate on telly, like, oh, I know, I know what's happening next. Do you know that kind of, there's a cheekiness to it. I don't know sure. what you're about to say next, but I love reading your stuff. But because yeah, you give, you're giving us a, a great insight because we think we're the greatest in the world, as, as almost every country does. I mean, they all, everybody's, but we've no idea of the perception of us. And it's always interesting when I go over and I meet friends who have lived there for a long time and it, like, Kieran, a mate of ours, and he's an engineer there. And he, he just said it. He goes, I oh, just casual racism pops up every so often in the office. I went, Really? Still? I said, Half these fuckers' grandparents are Irish. Because I know, I know, I know. He's like the, in our office, one of the older guys, one of the older architects, his, he would describe, you know, throwing a bit of a fit, you know, getting angry at something, a through a bit of a paddy, you know what I mean? And he sat up like, <laughs> All right. And even, yeah. even, he got a, a subscription to a magazine, an architecture magazine, wouldn't you know? And it was being delivered to the office. And his name being Kieran, it's pretty simple as Kieran to them. But they just wrote the paddy on his, really? yeah, and his desk and all the, the paddy. I was like, oh, oh, okay, all right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. You know, like what did, what, like on a, obviously you said you, like you work in a, a lot of cosmopolitan places and whatnot. You know what I mean? So it's, everybody's a mixed bag of everything. So it's probably a bit more forgiveness. But in bumfuck, middle of nowhere, like what do they think of us? Like, or can you pick being, up on that? Yeah, it's it's so strange. And I think, like I remember being in a pub in like West Sussex once. And uh, the woman said to me, um, you know, do, do you find Father Ted offensive? And I said, well, no, like do you find Monty Python offensive, you know, in one yeah. sense, Monty Python is a crude caricature of, of Englishness, but you know, it's, it's, it's written by English people for English people. I, Father Ted was written by, was written by Irish people. I don't find it. I don't find it offensive at all. Um, but they, the, the truth is they like, in terms of the politics, they know nothing. Of course. They know yeah, yeah. absolutely nothing and they care even less. In terms of the people, I actually think there's a pretty positive association with Irish people, generally speaking. Yeah. I think people like us, um, but they don't, they just don't understand it. They don't, they've known not that what we, I think what we struggle with is that they don't know the history, that yeah. they don't know what they did, you know? Oh, why like would they? they? They did it everywhere. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, this is it. This is it. Well, but their education system is Henry VIII shagged a load of birds. Uh, Churchill, bit of a ledge. That's their curriculum, right? Know? Um, and they're not. They, 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 they have no insight. I love that bit of a ledge. We we'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. No insight beyond that. Uh, and what what fascinates me about you know the Brexit situation with the Northern Irish border and whatever. This isn't even a question of geography. This is, isn't a question of history. It's a question of geography. You know? Right. They actually don't know where. The United Kingdom begins and ends. They of course. Know, like, I don't know the ins and outs of the German federal system. I don't know who Bavaria's biggest politician is, but I do know that Bavaria is not part of the Republic of Ireland. And <laughs> they, they, they actually don't know, oftentimes, what's in the Republic of Ireland, what's in the, in the United Kingdom, um, what, what, is, what, what is Northern Ireland uh, with respect to Britain, what is Northern Ireland with respect to to the, to the Republic of Ireland, no clue. Yeah, because I remember even, even I was chatting, you know, Rich Wilson. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Chatting with Rich and he was like, because anytime we ever met, met, it was always in the UK, like, and he's such a lovely fella, like, but he was talking about years previous being at a, I think he was at a wedding years and years previous in Ireland, you know, I was in Ireland. He was clearly in Northern Ireland, the way he went. <laughs> I guess it was like, it was crazy. Like there was guys with guns and things. And I was like, Oh yeah, what that, kind of wedding was he at? Well, what well, definitely wasn't our <laughs> neck of the woods anyway. And I tried no. to explain it to him, and he was, and you could see the surprise in his face, kind of going, "I." But it was literally again, it was like trying to explain where 
an Indian reservation begins and ends in Montana. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah. like he he no he had no grasp of the geography of it. Like, but I find a lot of British people or English people when they move from you know from one part to another, they will say, "Well, I grew up here." Even when watching housing programs, which we tend to watch a lot a lot of these days, but they say, "Well, I, yeah, I grew up in Sussex, and now I'm happy to be living in you know Shropshire or wherever." But it's it, when they point it out, it's almost like they have no grasp. They have no territory kind of grasp whatsoever. Whereas in Ireland, we very much do probably based on sporting as well. Mm, we break it down by county. Yeah. We've got the, you know. We've, and we've, then we've provincial kind of, then after that. Yeah. I, exactly. I, but I think that's something genetic in us probably from the warring days of, you know, when we'd like 50 kings, you know what I mean? Where every territory meant everything, you know. I don't think they give a bollocks, but it's a, it's one in all in kind of because they still have a royal family and shit, you know. So there's like, well, we're all in. Yeah, yeah. The big divide here, like I think in Ireland, the big divide is rural and urban, right? Yeah. And I think in the UK, it's north and south. It's right. The, it's, yes. the, it's the northern, uh, the north of England and the south of England, and the kind of social and economic, cultural, whatever yeah, yeah, disparity yeah. between the two. You know, um, that's the big dividing line here. Uh, but you're right to say that beyond that, it's 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 a bit homogenous. When, 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 certainly in the South, I couldn't tell you the difference between you know somebody from uh, one shire and another. You know, whereas Irish people will know the difference between Offaly people and Leash people yeah. and Kildare people. Like there'd be there's different accents that you know, and they they have accents here too. But you know, it all kind of blends into. Uh, a certain Englishness uh, uh, for me, at least. How did you get your leg in the door of the Irish Times, tell me? A lot of emails. I mean, it's like stand-up. You're just kind of pitching ideas. You're, you're sending emails. You're saying, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Brilliant. Um, and I think I got an article with the journal. I did a couple of articles with the journal that did quite well. Yeah, um, I think I think I think I went up on a bad. This was when I found my niche, I guess. I, I went on a bad date with an English girl. I remember this. Yeah, yeah, I can remember this and, article. Yeah, yeah, and it, it did it did well. Like it got it went it went around the houses, and then I sent the article to the Irish Times and said, "Hey, would you like me to write something similar for you?" And they said, "Yeah, sure." So you know, so I was years ago. They've changed, you know. They've changed editors since then. You're, 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 you're just always kind of pitching ideas. Yeah. You know, what do you think of this? What, what, what about that? Um, and you're, but they've all come back and say, yeah, we love it, or no, we don't want it, or we love it, but can you not say that about R. Kelly? Uh, <laughs> you know, can you, can you not compare? Can you? Can you not compare uh, England's relationship with Scotland and Northern Ireland to R. Kelly's relationship with his, uh, with those unfortunate women? Uh, you know, can you not? Can we? Can we tone this down a bit? Yeah, but fuck me, that's where all the humor is, for Christ's sake. Yeah. So it's always like, how many jokes can I get in? Like, I had yeah. an article recently where I compared Vogue Williams to Alexander Lukashenko in Belarus, <laughs> and the editor was like, "You can. <laughs> we can't print this." It's spot on. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, it's 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 an interesting process. What I do find is it's fun when you write something that may be, yeah, you because know, you you know it's stand up. You know, it can't just be clever. It has to be like laugh out loud. Yes. It has to get a good or response yeah. for people. So it's it's nice sometimes to find a home for a line or a thought. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and. Uh, you know, so I, I like that. I like that part of it. What's scary about it is that with stand up, you find that, you know, in an open mic night when when the when the stakes are quite low, if what you've said is funny or not. Whereas I'll find out in like the comment section. Um, you know what I mean? I I, I get one and done. Maybe you know, maybe the editor has a few edits for me, maybe not. Uh, but I find that I like I get I get one shot at it really for the yeah. for the line to, to work or not. You know. I th yeah, there's it's it is the, the 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 cruel. There's no net whatsoever with it, and there's it's funny you say that because that you have an outlet for those juicy juicy bits that you're going. What do you know? What there's too much thinking about. Like that's because there's a whole I, I had a whole bit about the kind of people that you would meet on construction sites because I briefly went back into construction and I'd forgotten. 
that if you wrote these people into a sitcom, you'd immediately go too much. No way. These don't exist. And they really do. Mm-hmm. And it's and to get people on side with the guy who at the very end, I basically I revealed that I'm an absolute coward because this guy is so terrifying. But I tried to break it down for how and it honestly, when I wrote it, I went, this might be might be the greatest thing I've ever written down. The thought, the thinking and bringing people around the houses. And Peter, I've tried it three fucking times. <laughs> and it's too much. It's too much in the, in, in the, in the life, life. I'm going, where am I going to put? Like, where, yeah. where, where am I going to put it? There's and, no place. To, and, there's no place and, to stand and, up. Out of it. interest, are you, are you doing that bit in the club set? Are you doing it as part of your hour? It was yeah. part of the hour and I tried it both. And it, okay. it, it was fine, but the big laughs happened two thirds of the way. It, big, big laughs happened fine two thirds of the way and then I get into the I know I sound a bit broken, but you got to come with me here here's here's my explanation let's break it down for you and I have these t- scenarios that in my head are hilarious and written down are really really clever but it's just kind of I'm getting a lot of kind of huh yeah 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 so I <laughs> it, it killed me but I chopped that off and put a yeah, nice it's hard it's hard and to I put a nice bow like on the, the two thirds bit put a nice bow brought it back around the house and went blah 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 blah, blah. and it was it killed me okay. a bit like but I was like ah well I don't, I, it really but you're getting not, those big laughs kind of two thirds of the way and you are you, you, oh, you're keeping that part it, absolutely the pro- right. problem being is the bit that I thought was badly needed was yeah. this really clever bit at the end that would you know swing people back around but it turns out it's, it's not really so needed and so it's just so much so much of stand-up is like, what can we agree on? Yes. What, can, what yeah. can the comic and the audience agree on? Because if we go out there and just do what we think is funny, it's not going to, you know, we're going to have short comedy careers. Like if, yeah. you, if you decided, well, you know what? The audience don't like this after three times. You know what? I'm going to do it 300 more times. Uh, and I don't, I don't care if they enjoy themselves. But equally, if you only do what you expect other people to find funny, you're, you're going to be dead inside very soon. So, so much of the process is going at and seeing what can we agree on? Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And you, that's a really good example of like, you have this, let's say uh, four part bit and they were, it said they were with you. They were with you up until kind of part three. Yeah. And then fell away. From, I was like, okay, I guess we can agree up to this point. Yeah. And that was literally it. It was literally it. Yeah. And I, I got in. So I, I extracted the, I suppose the, the premise of part four condensed it down into like three words and hit it just before we come to the end of part three. And that was enough. And it was like, well, I guess that's what a writer's room technically is too, in a way, but it was like, ah, but Jesus, that, and that was the thing. It was to get to the two thirds bit. People not, I wanted them to not fully agree with me. And this is how I'm going to get you back on board. And I thought I'm the most clever man ever. I've taken you one way. And, and, but then you go, Oh, here it's Friday night. People are just happy to be out. They don't want to put all this thought into it. It's like, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. This is where you're getting to, oh, beyond yourself now, Tom. Yeah. It doesn't need to be a TED talk. <laughs> That's kind of what I was getting into. It's like, <laughs> no, no, stay between your rails, Tom. Stay between your rails. Yeah. You, you know what? And, and you might find that gets a different reaction at 3 p.m. in Edinburgh on a Saturday afternoon. You know yes. what I mean? And yes. you've got a, an entirely different, you know, you're performing in like a cafe. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, just off Blair Street or something, right? And everybody's stroking uh, their chin for the hour. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I I, I think, I think you know, I hear that anecdotally here. Someone will have like an award-nominated Edinburgh show and then they take it on tour and suddenly that one man or one woman show, that, that fringe hour is just so different when it's like, on a Friday night and people are having pints and suddenly yeah. there's a sad bit 45 minutes in we're like Ugh. yeah you know so it's a different thing it's a different yeah you know, different yeah, yeah yeah and I won't let you go without telling me what did you study at TCD Peter <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you asked I'm so glad you asked <laughs> this is actually yeah. the only way I got this man on the podcast is that I was we were going to bring him around contractually to why <laughs> and what he studied at TCD and as much as he could possibly say about it yeah, what can I say? Uh, I studied uh, philosophy and political science, and I've only got one joke about it. Um, and I kind of, it's one, of, it's a joke I would, I kind of wrote it just as I was leaving Ireland. And it's been my closer for a while. I'm thinking about retiring it. Really? But it's a really, it's a really nice bit about uh, being in the social welfare office in Newbridge. 
uh, <laughs> kind of just got back from just got back from Australia. Um, there's nothing going on, and I'm going in to see this civil servant. And she's like, well, "What do you What do you want to do?" I was like, "Well, I want to be a comedian, you know." And she's like, "Yes, this is in Kildare. In this is in Kildare. I don't even, don't even need to finish that sentence." You mean you don't ride horses? What the What's wrong yeah, with this guy? You're, 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 you're not a jockey. You're not a spa, You're not an aspiring soldier. You know what? <laughs> you know you're not interested in herding sheep. Um. So I, you know, I want to be a comedian. Just do you have any other skills? And I said, yeah. I have a philosophy degree. <laughs> and she's like, so I've got it. I've got a routine. Yeah. Based on yeah. That, using that, using that as a premise, and uh, yeah, it's been that. Uh, it's been. It's, it, I've, it's 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 one of those bits in your back pocket. It's like, okay, I can I can close on this. You know? but, but I mean, in all fairness, I mean the 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 joking is but you could almost study nothing better than unless you're going to do you know one-liners but even still they need a bit of philosophy to root to really yeah, man. to but root you know, out the, the the quality that you you know to go mining for quality it's a bluff it's a bluffer's degree like i studied with the political science because it's way more uh it's way more you know it's, it's way more uh uh is it quantitative it's way more quantitative yeah uh, than, than I expected it to be. It's a lot of like looking at uh, polling numbers or analyzing trends over time. And I was like, I can't, can't even do this. Whereas philosophy is so much more about what do you think? Yeah. You know? uh, so you could, you could spoof. Um, and I think that you, but you have to spoof, spoof. You have to be articulate in your yeah. spoofing. Um, Which and- ironically is politics in a whole in a nutshell, yeah right? sure, like, sure, <laughs> sure sure and I, you know i don't think you're looking back around the article i don't think i'd be writing but they're, they're, for me they're almost like college essays i kind of learned how to write in that style ah, writing yes. a philosophy so you gotta have a, you have to have an argument you have to take a position on something and argue your position well that's the great thing about your headlines you know or your your um is it'll draw you in because while they're not completely on the nose there's always a little poke in the arse like on you want to have a read of this rather than just yeah, some sure. sensational shit. Like it's, you know, sure. Well, there... I always used to get those comments kind of at the end of the S. So this is back in the day where you would hand in like a physical essay and the lecturer would write his notes or her notes down at the bottom. I, mean, I used to get it like, uh, don't know if you fully understood Kant's categorical imperative, but you're, you, this was, this was a good read. Uh, <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Which is all that counts. Who gives a yeah, shit? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that, that stood to me, I guess, and nothing else. And I got that, I got that bit out of it. I got my closer closing routine out of it. So, you know, it's something. Class. And tell, uh, are you, are you going to Edinburgh this year? No, I'm hoping to go next year. I mean, yeah. This year, I'm just getting my bearings again. I'm back in yeah. the UK. I'm writing new material. I'm, I'm loving doing stand more than ever. I Isn't it unbelievable? Stand- the appreciation you have for yeah. people's faces is unbelievable. Oh, man. man. Pre-pandemic, I was ready to quit. I was like, I think, you know, do, do I still want to do this? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I was in the hard. exact same spot because it was like, there's a lot of fuck. And some acting stuff was coming up and I'm like, well, I mean, lucrative wise, this is what we're talking about. And, but just the exact same as that. I was like, do I love it? Like, you know, you're fucking having to bail, head out on a Friday night and you're gone. And then you hit the odd stag party and you're like, well, fuck this, you yeah. know. Yeah, but, you're, you're giving up. You're giving up your weekend a lot of times yeah. to go and babysit drunks in some instances, you know. Um, and uh, I was kind of what you. I think what you're afraid of is losing your spot. Yeah. So I was thinking it would be amazing if everybody had to stop at once. Yeah, it's a great. That's level what art. I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. And then within months, fucking COVID nineteen. Hold on, you, like, you, manifested the fucking pandemic through your yeah. own greed. I that's have a, powers. That's, I mean, I'm raging with you, but at the same time, that's really impressive. That's. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's geez. the training degree, man. That's, uh, <laughs> Trainers for winners, baby. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But man, now that I'm back, I, w- I was surprised by how much I missed it. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm like going to open mic nights. And like I used to hate going to open mic nights and like bombing with you. Now I love it. Yeah, I love it. I I I, I enjoy an open mic night now more than a club gig because I'm doing jokes that I wouldn't have had the confidence to do pre-pandemic. 
Yeah. I was like, no, I'm just doing this because I I'm enjoying it, and I'm doing more material that now feels more me as well, and it, it feels great. I'm, I'm I'm shocked at how much I'm enjoying. It. Isn't that isn't that brilliant? And I wonder is that wholesale across the way? Like, and although I ran, I was at a club a couple of weeks ago, and Jesus, you're and everybody had brand new stuff that I hadn't seen. I was so excited. I was like, oh god, that's a fucking killer. And this new kid was on, and I'd heard of him, and he was oh he did this bit. Oh my god, about going losing his hair oh fuck it was it had me doubled i was like yes and then a chap that i know went up and he just he did 15 minutes of the golden oldies i'm like you had two years man you had two <laughs> years come on come on like, come on christ above you know talking yeah. about you know oh jesus yeah like, but like that exactly it's and i think the it's it's across a lot of things probably fashion fucking hairstyle you know but i think people have are giving less of a shit because it's just been so weird and people were just wearing pajamas for two years you're like i don't give a shit about yeah you know, i just don't yeah and i'm the same way i'm writing stuff that i would have kept in the back of my head and went i can't let this out to the public i can't but now it's ah, you're taking you have risks it. have yeah. it have it yeah and audiences i think for the most part are up for it i mean they, they are because the they too. see they, they can they can you know they can pick up on it they telepathically they're picking up on your excitement when there's a warm fuzzy feeling inside you're going i fucking can't wait to say this bit next bit and i i'm literally running to the next bit going this, 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 this. I'm, I'm actually killing myself for not time you know timing like a stuff but sure. they can they can see it they can see the giddy child in me going and then i start I, like the worst thing ever i start roaring laughing at my own bit going this is like, <laughs> This is, I should not be doing this, but it's so yeah. silly, you know. Yeah, then, you're doing like genuine corpsing. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, genuine, yeah, like yeah. going, this is silly. I, we, yeah, and I mean, I would, it would, I would be disgusted with myself if I was still keep grinning at it four or five more times. Like, I'd be going, oh, stop now, Tom, stop that now, because you're now you're forcing that. Oh, I can't believe I'm laughing, <laughs> bit. which we've all seen lads do before, where they make that mistake in the middle of a sentence 20 fucking times. Right. Like, you're, like, oh, you're right. Geez. Right, right. Where, what's the, where, when's the next? Because you had one only out last week, was it the sixth? I saw the last one. Was this the last one out last week? Um, my, my writing, the article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, before this call, I'm just working on one. So watch this space. I'll probably pitch it next week and, and see uh, see where it goes. I'll put all, all your socials. Twitter, you're fairly active on Twitter more than anywhere else, really. Like, Yeah, I usually, uh, for my writing, yeah, a lot of Twitter. Twitter and Instagram are the yeah, ones for I'll, me. So at Peter Flanagan on Twitter and at Peter Flanagan Comedy on uh, Instagram. I'm being more active on Instagram now. I've good, yeah. Stories. You followed me on TikTok even. What are we like? I know. I TikTok. can't figure out TikTok. I'm too right. old for, for TikTok I, already. But, um, no, right. But uh, yeah. the, it's yeah. trust me you'll you'll put something up that you won't give one shit about and then all of a sudden your phone will literally light up so it's i think don't overthink they named it fucking a tiktok there was not a lot of thought process so i think people <laughs> literally the most insane thing happened at one friday evening i genuinely had heard it and it made me warm and giggly inside from a polish person who in a shop where i was speaking about gloves or fingers and toes, I said, at least your toes would be warm. And he went, oh, we don't call them toes. We call them fingers of your feet. And I remember thinking that is the funniest, most adorable. An adult man is saying this to me, fingers of your feet. <laughs> and I imagine fingers. And I said that I literally a 10 second moment where I went, turns out Polish people don't have a word for fingers. They call them or toes. They call them fingers of your feet. That's it. Put the phone down on a Friday, had a couple of drinks. Oh my Jesus Christ! Like four hundred thousand comments and views later, it's like, what? and now I could write the put up the best stand up in the world. Wouldn't get a look in. You put up that care. stuff. Yeah, that's that's amazing, where, isn't it? So lower the bar for TikTok. That's all I'll say. Lower the bar. Okay. All right. Keep it simple. <laughs> Peter Flanagan, this has been absolutely beautiful. Pleasure was mine, Tom. Good talking to you. And my thanks again to Peter. Do follow him on every, whatever platform you can. He's an absolute dynamite dynamite comedian if you are UK based try and grab a hold of him he's class like I said Cork tonight Tipperary on the 3rd I think there's a couple left but if you want to get your tickets have a look down the show notes if you want to become a patron you know the crack it's down the show notes as well have an old gander you'll get the ad free stuff every Thursday you get the video as well and you get into the live shows on a Sunday night so 
this Sunday we're doing one. We're going to have a few beers, have a bit of crack. You know yourself. Bill and all that. Go ahead, smash the subscribe button and the old bell and give it the five stars if you are listening on Spotify, which most people are. If you're on any other platform that allows you to rate it, give it the top billing. Give it top billing. Nothing else is any use to me. Right. Going away, boys and girls. I'll talk to you again next week. Good night, good blessed. Thanks.